My name is Patricia Fuller from Council Bluffs. Uh, first off, I would like to thank the board for their purchase requirement of the 400 megawatts of uh, wind energy. I think this is a great stride forward. Uh, also, like to comment on uh, Governor Heinemann's uh, encouragement for public power districts to uh, view wind in a positive uh, manner. Uh, but as stakeholders and people that are affected by uh, the pollution from North Omaha plant, I guess we'd like to know a little bit more about the corporate operating plan for uh, environmentally sensitive energy. Basically, is there a commitment to close this plant? Is there a commitment to convert this plant to natural gas? I think that's something we'd all like to know some more specifics on and also the expense that's going to be uh, associated with uh, current regulations on uh, mercury. Um, on November 4th, a group of us had a chance to go down to Lenexa, Kansas to the EPA hearing on carbon regulation. There were about 400 people there, and of that, the majority, uh, two to one margin, was in favor of carbon regulations. We know that uh, coal-fired power plants contribute 40% to greenhouse gases. We also know that 97% of all scientists believe that greenhouse gases are driving our climate change. Back in 2007, the Supreme Court affirmed the EPA's authority to regulate greenhouse gases. And uh, just this week, on November 11th, Yeb Sano, the Philippines delegate to uh, the UN Climate Convention in Poland, spoke out powerfully and poignantly, saying, to anyone who continues to deny the reality that this is climate change, I dare you to get off your ivory tower and away from the comfort of your armchair. I dare you to go to the islands of the Pacific, the islands of the Caribbean, and the islands of the Indian Ocean and see the impacts of the rising sea levels. To the hills of Central America that confront similar monstrous hurricanes to the vast savannas of Africa where climate change has likewise become a matter of life and death as food and water becomes more scarce. And if that is not enough, you may want to pay a visit to the Philippines right now. Although the full extent of climate change, although the full extent to which climate change influenced Super Typhoon Haiyan has not been determined, the storm is yet another reminder of how climate change has already made extreme weather more extreme this horrific example shows just how critical it will be in the future to regulate carbon. Thank you. Hi, I'm Crystal Craig. I live in La Vista. Um, I had a couple of questions. Um, on the new wind farm, I was curious about how much of that power is going to be sold wholesale, and also on the restart of the nuke plant how much of that is going to be distributed wholesale and like how much is going to go to people like like us. We can work with it. I don't think we've got the money to do it. So it's depending on day to day. So we can try and get you some average. She's asking for off-site sales. Off-system sales? Yeah, okay. That's what she was That's what I thought she was. Uh, I think the SPP uh, requirements will change a lot of this as they go in, the day two thing, uh, which is all of the energy within the SPP is, is put in a pool and <coughs> the energy needs for the next day are determined by the various utilities and then utilities with excess power then will put in bids to supply that. So what's going to happen, it's going to be a day-to-day -day thing as to what's going to be required for domestic uses and what's going to be required for external uses. And then you have factor in, you saw the days that the units will be down, because when those units are down, there's less power to sell to somebody else. So it's a complicated formula, and I don't think we have a specific number in the budget that we would do. We don't segregate the power from Nebraska City or the power from Fort Calhoun, the power from the wind. It's all on our system, right? You can't specifically say this power went. Um, Here, can you? Go ahead. I, I would say that Director Green's comment about the day two market is, is right on that in the future what we're going to be doing is we're going to be dispatching to the whole region with all the other companies to come up with the most economic 
operation of all the systems. So we're optimizing, and it's going to matter what the cost is of those resources as to how it's utilized. So to the extent everything is fully utilized, then everything goes in. Uh, today, what happens is an economic dispatch. So when we are running our system, we're taking the most economic resources in to serve our load. And then to the extent our other resources that are not being operated, if the cost of operating those resources are less than the market price, then they're sold into the market. And that's what you see when you saw the off-system sale amount. That's where we're able to sell that. And the reason we do that is because all of our assets are owned by our customers. And to the extent we can sell those resources into the market and make money, we can take that money and then keep our rates down. So we're trying to optimize the use to manage those costs for our customer owners. That's where the money goes. So complicated answer, probably way too complicated for what you ask. I apologize. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's great. I think that was. I love that kind of detail, and I think she does too. She's a smart young woman. Okay, uh, efficiency. For every dollar you invest in efficiency, you displace three to five dollars of future generation costs. It's a great way to lower your future generation costs. And then, of course, every dollar you invest in efficiency, you generate seven to twelve dollars worth of economic activity in the community, which you were discussing earlier about the economics. And the newest, greatest number is. <laughs> For every 10% decrease of inequity, you increase 50% economic numbers. You, know, you get 50% more economy. <clears throat> and why that's really important is because when you do efficiency, windows, doors, and insulation, you actually improve everybody's structures. You make them more livable, more pleasant to be in, safer, the whole business. Their health care costs go down. Their overall costs go down. Your overall costs go down. 40% of your cost is generating electrons. If you didn't have to generate electrons to provide service, you could lower those overall costs for the corporation. And so, of course, the safest contract is a contract where you don't need energy. Thank you very much, and have a nice day. Oh, one more thing. On the new plant, um, you had said uh, at the executive meeting that um, uh, you, you're, you're estimating that you're going to be out of the 0350 committee by 2014. Uh, the last uh, committee, um, actually when the committee shut down, there was oversight for an extra year and a half. And of course, historically, that runs, you know, typically three to five years, depending on the problems. You were the worst one in the country, so I'm assuming you'll have a longer uh, thing. And then, of course, once you get to running, you have to make sure you can um, actually fill out the paperwork and run it at the same time. <clears throat> so, um, anyway, so it's going to be longer than 2014. So I think that projection is a little dubious, is all I was trying to add to. Thank you. Have a good day. Kathleen Hughes, um, Omaha, right here. Um, I just wanted to thank you for several things that uh, happened that I learned recently. One was that there was an education at the South Omaha Library um, from OPBD, where I was able to find out about the rate meter that you can that you can check out at the library. So I immediately checked it out, checked all everything in my house, and it was awesome. It's a really good education. I went out and bought a ton of several LED light bulbs that I'm just was amazed at how much energy was saved by the LED versus even the CF, CFL and the regular light bulbs and my really old lamps. So changing the lamps I use in the house. Um, and turning off the lights in the bathroom because I have four lights in the bathroom but then I went to, this was given away at the um, Energy Expo which was Sunday and this is awesome. It's a solar night light which is much better than having four lights in the bathroom at night. It's great. Um, um, and um, you have no water bottles on the table. That's great. <laughs> saving, us, saving us oil. <laughs> um, and I like the fact that you're talking about being environmentally sensitive. And um, um, what else am I grateful for? The education, I'd like that to continue to other libraries. It was really great. Wattester Solar Light. The, and that wind energy, that we have an increase of uh, the renewable wind energy to 30%. That's awesome. Really good news. Um, I'm very nervous about the nuclear power plant being opened, and we'd like to get beyond coal. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. I'm Dr. Bobby Davis, uh, a lifelong rate uh, payer uh, in, in Omaha. You need the address 4947 Spalding for your records. Uh, I'd like to mention three things. Uh, number one, I uh, 
had the opportunity to find out about some very difficult situations that are occurring in Omaha as a result of an increase in asthma in the area around the North Omaha plant. And as a result of that increase in asthma, the state now has established L LB 800, which means that students who are out of school because they are ill or for any other reason uh, are now being sent to the Douglas County lawyers, I mean, to the whole, going, going through the whole law thing. I have a flyer here. If any of you would like to know more about that, that's going on. But a lot of that is related to the uh, coal producing plant in North Omaha. So I'm saying that we really need to speed up that process because our children are suffering and now they're being put into the legal system and being taken from their families because they have asthma, because they're out of school, because they're sick. And so I, I know Senator Chambers is going to be working on getting that law repealed, but still it relates to what's coming out of the, the North Omaha plant. Uh, the other thing, I, I wasn't quite sure about where uh, our president was when he said, now I know that there was uh, some purchase of coal last in 2013. And there's, then you mentioned that there's some possibility of natural gas at the Fort Omaha plant, uh, at the North Omaha plant. So I'm not sure where we are. And back to the question that was asked earlier, I'm not hearing a plan on discontinuing burning coal. I, I hear a plan on buying more coal which says to me that you're not continuing that you're not planning to discontinue and using it because if you were not going to use it you wouldn't have bought it. So uh, could we hear some information about what that plan is? I didn't hear it in the in your 2014 plan plan and I was listening very carefully to see if I would hear that and I didn't hear it. The, uh, the coal purchases uh, that I was talking about are um, the rate, not necessarily if we're going to purchase the coal, but we have contracts to purchase coal if we need it. And the second is we have, uh, we have tested and we are testing on gas. We have not made a decision, but we're doing that testing because we need that data to obviously make the decision if it's possible. And we've done that on one, two, three, and four and five will be done this month. So we haven't bought the coal, but we have a contract, uh, a favorable contract to buy it. So we, we don't know how much we're going to use next year. Plus, we have two coal plants in Odo County. You understand that as well. Oh, okay. So you are moving toward the, the natural gas, but you don't quite have a timeline. So we'll be hearing about that in next month's meeting. We'll be uh, <laughs> continuously reporting on that. I'm not going to commit to next month, although All nice right. try, uh, Dr. Davis. <laughs> uh, but uh, we'll, we'll be talking to you about it. Anybody else? Seeing none, readings adjourned.